Okay, but uh, yeah, so before I start, let me also uh, say a word of thanks. Uh, we should, uh, <coughs> we should all of us uh, thank uh, Rika and Samik and Anita for being uh, organizing this uh, wonderful meeting, which uh, I've really thoroughly enjoyed. And all, again, also the, uh, all the staff of ICTS who've uh, made this such a wonderful experience. So, oh, thanks to ambidexterity. So, uh, uh, <coughs> We said the uh, main ambidexterity theorem that we're aiming towards is formulated in the category of K and local spectra. So let's just have a uh, few reminders about how that category works. So we've got a spectrum Z, we're gonna say, uh, and K is our Morava K theory, the two periodic Morava K theory spectrum. And we're gonna say that Z is K acyclic if the K homology of Z is trivial. And then we're gonna say that X is K local if it's got no maps from any K acyclic object Z. Um, so the most basic example, of course, is that K itself is K local. And then we make an infinity category of k-local spectra. That's going to be called curly k. And, uh, <clears throat> and a kind of key point is that we can make any spectrum uh, k-local. So there's a, you've got a spectrum X, and there's a localization, LX. Uh, and you've got a map from X to LX. And the fiber is uh, CX, and CX is ka cyclic, And uh, LX is k-local. And the fact that CX is ka cyclic and this is a co-fibration, that means that the map from X to LX is, uh, is, gives you an isomorphism on the Morava K theory of X to the Morava K theory of LX. So this, is a, this is a K equivalent, this is K A cycle. <coughs> uh, and uh, so uh, LX is zero if and only if, uh, the, if uh, X is K A cyclic, in other words, the K homology of X is zero. And uh, consequence for a morphism, uh, L, of, L of a morphism F is an isomorphism if and only if uh, F gives you an isomorphism of K homology. So kind of, yeah. Basic uh, basic structure for um, K and localization. <coughs> we, we need to do uh, limits and co-limits in K, right? We're supposed to be uh, uh, looking at these left and right adjoints, uh, Q lower star, Q, uh, Q lower shriek. Uh, those are kind of, we need, uh, need to know about limits and co-limits to form those, uh, those adjoints. Um, the limits, well, your curly K is just gonna be closed under limits. Uh, so we just take the limits in the ambient category S and, that, and we, that's all it, right? Get yeah, co-limits in K, right? If you take a co-limit of a diagram, you take a diagram in K and you take its co-limit in spectra, then the result need not be local, but you could just apply the functor L to make it local. And then that object will be the uh, co-limit of the diagram uh, considered in the category K. <coughs> um, so it's useful to understand about um, uh, localization of modules over, um, over co the complex cobordism spectrum MP. So, uh, I'll explain about that. Remember, you've got this uh, spectrum MP, the periodic complex boredom thing, and then uh, it has a formal group, uh, formal group law, and a P series of that formal group law. So this is a certain power series in X, uh, take, uh, formed by taking the, uh, the formal sum of X with itself uh, P times, or Euler class of the P tensor power of the tautological bundle over CP infinity. Uh, and so this is a formal power series, and you look at its coefficients, and UI is going to be the coefficient of x to the p to the i in that series. <clears throat> and then uh, i n means the ideal generated by u zero up to u n minus. Uh, <clears throat> and so for, um, if you've got a module, a module spectrum over MP, then the localization is for quite uh, not so hard to understand. You invert the element u n, and then you complete with respect to the lower u i's. That's, uh, more or less a completely algebraic sort of uh, construction. Um, and as well, if you do this to E, remember uh, the uh, uh, coefficient ring of E, uh, you've just got uh, your UN is equal to one in more or less, and then the U zero, and it's a formal power series in these variables, U1 up to UN minus one. So you've already, it's already, uh, UN's already invertible and it's already complete with respect to IN. So when you do this, you're not doing anything. So uh, uh, that means that e, is, e, is, e itself is already k local. So that's one argument for that, and all these various other ways you can see that E is k, k local. <coughs> um, and, uh, and this kind of tells you more or less what you need to know. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a fact that uh, yeah, any k local spectrum is in the thick subcategory generated by localizations of uh, MP modules. Uh, it's kind of a, it, it, it's a, it's a very formal fact, not, uh, not very deep at all, that uh, you, know, you can build any k-local spectrum as a kind of infinite uh, 
by some infinite construction from these LMs uh, that you can form a, an infinite tower whose uh, fibers are of the form LM and the, hom the homotopy inverse limit is your k-local thing. Uh, but to do the fact that you can do this in finitely many stages, that's, uh, that's rather deeper. That's uh, basically it's tight, tightly uh, connected to the fact that if you look at the uh, automorphism group of E uh, in appropriate sense, that's what's called the uh, Morava stabilizer group. And the Morava stabilizer group has a finite virtual cohomological dimension. That's the thing that uh, ensures that you can uh, do this in finitely many stages. <clears throat> and then another deep theorem, uh, this is part of, part of the whole complex of ideas associated with the nilpotence theorem of Devonats, Hopkins, and Smith, uh, that we can find a finite spectrum F. Um, uh, you'd kind of like to find a finite spectrum F such that, uh, yeah, which just kind of kills off IN so that. Uh, MP lower star of F would just be MP star mod IN. You can't quite do that. You have to sort of raise these generators to some powers. Um, and uh, you've got INs will typically be kind of uh, some large power of P each of them. But uh, <coughs> anyway, you can, you can find, find a for, uh, finite spectrum which, uh, which looks like this. <coughs> okay, so uh, um, we wanted to prove that the kind of this ambidexterity thing, left adjoints are equal to right adjoints. So we're going to uh, define PG of X to be the cofiber of the map from, uh, so here it's kind of implicit that G is, uh, 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 G is going to be a finite groupoid. And uh, so you get uh, an X is like a, a functor from G to K local spectra. So we take this cofiber here and remember the, uh, um, yeah, so actually, yeah, so if G is just a group, then uh, X is just going to be a spectrum of action of G. Uh, your C lower shriek X, that's a kind of co-limit of that action. If you calculated it in the full category of spectra, it would just be this Borel construction XHG, but we're doing it in the category curly K. So to make the co-limit in curly K, we have to apply our localization functor here. Uh, and, but then the, uh, the, the C lower star X is just the uh, homotopy inverse limit, uh, the homotopy six points X to the HG, take the co-fiber of that. Uh, and uh, uh, as we explained last time, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Tate thing for, for um, Morava K theory itself is just zero. So uh, PG of the spectrum K uh, with trivial G action, that's just gonna give you zero. <clears throat> and so let's explain how that implies uh, that uh, PGX is, is uh, zero for any X, okay? Um, <clears throat> well, if M is a module over K, uh, then well, so I haven't kind of properly explained this, but this PG functor, it's, it is monoidal. Um, so it converts rings to rings and it converts modules to modules. So if M is a module over K, then PG of M will be a module over PGK, but PGK is zero. Any module over the zero ring is zero. Uh, so, uh, so PG is gonna kill any K module. <clears throat> now what if it's a module over MP? <clears throat> well, it's again, it's a... Um, a fact that I'm not going to explain, but uh, it's just part of the sort of whole general apparatus of uh, interaction between formal group theory and, uh, uh, and MP theory and so on. Uh, that if I say, well, <coughs> yeah, if I take a, a module over MP and I smash it with F, uh, then it will be in the, uh, the thick subcategory generated by uh, K modules. I mean, <coughs> yeah, I mean if, F were, if F kind of had this kind of simpler property that you were just getting, uh, uh, that it was just killing off I N itself, then what you'd get, you'd get, uh, then when you form this localization, uh, you wouldn't need to do anything for this completion. You, and then you would just be inverting UN. Uh, and then you'd get something that kind of looks, looks like a algebra over, uh, over a K theory spectrum, uh, but uh, <clears throat> a little bit of extra work. Anyway, this is true. Localization of F, F smashed with M is in the thick subcategory generated by K modules. And this PG is an exact functor. It converts co-vibrations to co-vibrations. And so if it kills all K modules, then it's going to kill this uh, localization of F smash F. <clears throat> uh, <coughs> but here, you know, I'm smashing with a finite spectrum. And smashing with a finite spectrum kind of basically commutes with any, uh, any operation in uh, stable homotopy theory that you might, uh, you might have a think of. So we can just take this F uh, from inside the uh, PG to the outside. So we find that F smashed with PG LM is zero. Uh, <coughs> But, uh, <coughs> uh, and this is kind of in our K-local category, uh, but, uh, um, but this is actually gonna imply that PG of LM is zero. I mean, that's kind of easy to see because 
you look at the Morava K theory of this thing, uh, Morava K theory has a perfect Kunnefizer morph. You just take the Morava K theory of F and tensor it with the Morava K theory of PGLF. Um, but the uh, Morava K theory of F is non zero, and uh, we're just work and yeah, we're just tensoring over FP essentially. It's just over a field. So if you tensor with something non trivial and you get zero, it must have been zero in the first place. So yeah, so we find that uh, PG of LM is zero. So any, um, so we started with K, then we did. Uh, Concluded it works for K modules. Now we conclude it works for MP modules. Uh, but then we said any act, uh, uh, look, look at the fixed subcategory generated by localization of MP modules, that gives you the whole of K. Uh, and so for that reason, that any, any K local spectrum, uh, this Tate thing is zero. Uh, and so the uh, C lower shriek and C lower star. Are the <laughs> so that's the ambidexterity theorem uh, for, uh, for ordinary group points. Rest of the lecture, we're going to try and get to do it for uh, infinity groupoids, but uh, this is uh, this is, does it for ordinary group. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so uh, before we do that, as a, as part of the wind up, uh, build up to that, I'm going to say something much more elementary. Um, we've got finite groupoid G. Uh, the MG is going to be the rational vector space freely generated by uh, pi zero G. Pi zero G is the Set of isomorphism classes in the groupoid. Uh, that's going to be a finite set. And so this is a finite dimensional vector space over the rational. And the G, uh, M upper star G is going to be the dual of that, which is so just, a, uh, or just a set of maps from pi zero G to Q. And this one is kind of naturally a ring just under pointwise multiple. <coughs> so we're going to define a kind of inner product, uh, a, a Q valued inner product on this vector space MG. So the uh, inner product of a basis element A with a basis element B is just the number of isomorphisms from A to B. So in particular, that's zero unless, unless, they're really, unless they are isomorphic. <coughs> um, so that's obviously a, it's got a, that's obviously a, like a perfect pairing, um, gives you, a, identifies MG with its duals. <coughs> okay, so this, yeah, this identifies MG with its dual, so it identifies MG with M upper star G. And so well, we transfer the inner product to get our inner product on M up star G. Uh, and uh, this can be described like this. So, <coughs> so, um, so the con most convenient way to describe it, we choose one member of each isomorphism class, call those A1 up to AR. And then so you take your F and your G, you take the values at the each isomorphism class and multiply them. And you have to multiply by this factor G of uh, so the inverse of the size of the group of automorphisms. You had that you said the, uh, the order here on the on the MG side, and once you work out through all the dualities, you end up having the inverse of that order coming into the formula here. <coughs> okay. And you could actually, um, as I said, this M up star G is naturally a ring. So what we could say is we're just going to multiply F and G, uh, and then we apply this uh, linear map theta, which is just you take uh, values at the AIs and divide by the group order. <coughs> <coughs> now, uh, uh, the kind of the natural functoriality. I mean, M is naturally covariantly functorial, and M upper star naturally uh, contravariantly functorial. So, you're, you're, I'm going to call it Q lower shriek from you know, we've got Q from G to H. Then it induces Q lower shriek going forwards, the sending the uh, basis element corresponding to A to the basis element corresponding to QA, or the, and the dual thing Q upper star is. Uh, um, <coughs> Uh, gives you a uh, uh, just q upper star of g, of g is just uh, composing g with q. <coughs> um, but because we've got perfect pairings, you know, you, you've got an adjoint. Um, <coughs> so, uh, uh, oh, um, yeah, so, uh, so I could say that, uh, I mean, I had the q, q lower shriek going forwards on the m side, you have the q upper star. Uh, is just the adjoint to that. So Q, the inner product of Q lower shriek U with V is the inner product of U with Q upper star V. Similarly over here, and kind of everything is compatible in every way that you could possibly think of. <coughs> and uh, just as a side comment, so we got a, uh, so we've given an isomorphism from M lower, M of G to M upper star G. Okay? I mean, the inner product induces an isomorphism here. And this is actually, if you think about it, this is just the same thing as what we were calling mu. Um, you, know, you take Q, just Q, and then C upper star Q is the constant functor with value Q. And then C lower star, C lower shriek of that is the co-limit. Um, the co-limit of the constant functor is just MG. 
and the, the limit of the constant functor is m upper star g, and then the, uh, the map uh, it, map corresponding to this inner product is just R new. <clears throat> okay, so why did I introduce that? And it's because it's a convenient framework for talking about classical character theory, uh, classical representations. So, uh, <clears throat> so we've got uh, yeah, RG, what do you say? Uh, isomorphism classes of, co of complex representations and then formal differences of those. Uh, that's uh, those, are, those things are called uh, virtual representations. Uh, RG is the uh, ring of virtual representations. <clears throat> and so if we've got a functor Q from uh, G to H, then that gives us uh, Q upper star going from VH back to VG and then Q lower shriek, which is the same as Q lower star going forwards. Uh, and uh, the, both of these, they're going to induce maps of representation rings. Uh, Q upper star is a, going from RH back to RG. That's actually a ring map. Q lower shriek going forwards is not a ring map, but it is a, a map of abelian groups. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, you can also define this map theta uh, from RG to Z. So one way to say it, in the case of a group, this is just the thing that uh, sends a, a representation to the dimension of a fixed points. Um, or you could also, if you want to connect this with all the other kind of stuff we've been saying, you can say that this is just the uh, C lower shriek or C lower star. Uh, I mean, R of one for a trivial groupoid, uh, representation ring of a trivial groupoid is Z. And uh, so your C local shriek or C lower star gives you a map from RG to R1, and that is, uh, that is just theta. <coughs> and so using that, we get a pairing, right? I mean, RG is a ring. You take uh, U and V, you multiply them, and you apply this theta. That gives you a symmetric bilinear form of RG. Um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, it's kind of a classical fact of representation theory that this gives you a perfect pairing. It uh, induces an isomorphism from RG to its own view. And, uh, and then you get you had these Q lower shriek and Q upper star from RG to RH, and those are going to be adjoint uh, with respect to these pairings. Uh, that uh, again is a kind of a classical fact of representation theory. <coughs> and it's not hard to prove. <coughs> okay, but so this is all representation theory. It's of course the uh, um, kind of key technique that we use in classical representation theory is the theory of group characters. So let's uh, review that in an appropriate language. So. Uh, I'm going to do, let L be the subfield of the rationals generated by all roots of unity. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of more traditional in character theory to use the whole field L, but you can get away the whole field C, uh, but you can get away with just using L, and that's kind of going to be convenient. <clears throat> so I've got some automorphism of V of finite order. Um, so alpha VM is one, so then all the eigenvalues of uh, alpha are necessarily going to be roots of unity. And so the trace of alpha uh, is going to lie in this field L. <coughs> so now I'm going to let uh, lambda G be the groupoid of functors from Z to G. Okay, so remember, Z is a group under addition. But we can think of it as being a groupoid with one object. Uh, and so you can think about uh, functors of groupoids from Z to G. <coughs> and uh, well, so. Um, so you've got the single object of Z goes to some object A and G, and then the element one in Z gets sent to some automorphism of that A. So, uh, so, so we can just kind of spell this out more explicitly. So the objects of lambda G are pairs consisting of an object and an automorphism. <coughs> and uh, a morphism from A comma U to A prime comma U prime is just an, an element G, a morphism in G from A to A prime. Uh, where u prime is the conjugate, u prime is g, g u g. That's the structure of this lambda g. <coughs> um, <coughs> and so if g is just a group, then uh, yeah, well, then the cl isomorphism classes in lambda g are just the same thing as conjugacy classes in the group. This is a kind of groupoidy way to talk about uh, the just talk about the set of conjugacy classes. <coughs> Okay, so then uh, anyway, we've got this groupoid lambda G, and then on the previous slide, we defined this M upper star for any groupoid. So we can do M upper star of lambda G, uh, which is the maps from pi zero G to Q. And I'm going to tensor that up with this field L. So we've got uh, L, uh, this is just maps from the uh, isomorphism classes in lambda G to the field L. Uh, set of those I'm going to call CG. Uh, and this is obviously, this is a ring 
on the pointwise multiplication. <coughs> and so, yeah, we uh, <coughs> on the previous slide, you know, we defined a map theta from uh, uh, from m, m upper star uh, g to q for any uh, uh, any groupoids. So now we're going to apply that to the groupoid lambda g. That's giving us a map. There's a map theta from the m upper star to q. We're tensoring everything with l, so we get a map theta from cg to l. <coughs> and uh, and also uh, just by as a special case of the stuff on the previous slide applied to lambda g, we get these maps q lower shriek from cg to ch, q upper star from ch to cg whenever we've got a q from q. <coughs> and uh, I've got a representation uh, v of, uh, of my groupoid. And I can define a map uh, chi v, an element of CG. So uh, chi v is supposed to be an element of CG. So it's supposed to give me a, an element of L for each of these objects AU. So I have to tell you what, what that is. So chi v evaluated at a pair AU like this. Well, uh, U is a morphism from A to A, and V is a representation of G. So U gives me an, a map, a U lower star from VA to VA uh, of finite dimensional rational vector spaces or finite dimensional complex vector spaces. And I take its trace. Uh, by, so while, by what I set up here, that trace actually is an element of L. Uh, <clears throat> so this, uh, uh, so this, this construction gives me a map chi v from pi zero lambda g to L. In other words, an element that's charactering CG. <coughs> and so the claim is that this map is an isomorphism from well, yeah, this chi. <coughs> so I define chi for any any, uh, any representation and extends just in the obvious way for virtual representations, and then I tensor up by L. I'm going to get a map from L tensored with a re representation ring to CG. That's an isomorphism. <clears throat> so that again is just uh, if you reduce to the case of a group, then that's a, a very classical fact of representation theory, uh, except maybe for the fact that I'm using L into, instead of C, but that doesn't really make a difference. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, because I formulated it in a way that's kind of very natural for groupoids, uh, it's kind of you know, uh, not very hard to see that the uh, statement for uh, arbitrary for groupoids reduces to the statement for groups. Um, so this is all, uh, all kosher. <clears throat> and uh, you check that, you know, I mean, here we had the, uh, you, you, we had the inner products, the thetas, the uh, Q lower shriek of the Q lower star and the Q upper star, uh, had both of those on the CG side and also on the RG side. And uh, you can uh, check directly from the definitions that everything is. <clears throat> okay, so that's supposed to be a warm up. <clears throat> We're doing the generalized characters, <coughs> which is, uh, you know, RG is kind of you know, the Morava E theory of BG is in various ways analogous to RG. Uh, and so uh, we, we're going to hope to get a similar kind of characterized morphism for that. <coughs> so, as usual, we fix a prime P and some height n bigger than zero, and we let E be the corresponding Morava E. <coughs> <coughs> um, so, remember, if we work in Morava K theory, then the P series or the P series is just X to the P to the N. The P to the K series is X to the P to the N K. It is kind of, it's more complicated from Morava E theory, of course, but, it, but it's still, you know, it's still something like a degree, uh, a polynome, something like X to the P to the N K. You can see that this uh, P to the K series, you can factor it as you know, something invertible that we don't really care about, multiplied by a polynomial, a monic polynomial of degree uh, P to the N K, uh, which will, and if we reduce modulo, uh, the, your, your generator is UI, then the, this, this, mono, mo, this polynomial GK will just become the, the, the P to the K series for Morava K theory, which is just X to the P to the N. Um, yeah, and then this E0 of, uh, uh, of the uh, cyclic group uh, CP to the K, you just get the uh, uh, power series ring, and then you uh, take the quotient uh, by this uh, monic polynomial. And because it's a monic polynomial, it kind of doesn't actually matter whether I look at think about polynomials or power series, it gives me the same answer. Uh, <coughs> and yeah, and then, so this thing is just free of rank P to the NK over E0 uh, generated by the power specs. <coughs> okay, so, uh, <coughs> so we've got these GKs and we can uh, make a sort of algebraic extension where we adjoin some roots. Uh, we, well, we can adjoin one root of GK and then, uh, uh, yeah, and then you've still, uh, then you can start adjoining, uh, then you sort of factor out, you adjoin one root alpha, and then you factor out x minus alpha, and you've got another polynomial, you adjoin some more roots, carry on. So you can keep on adjoining roots until you've got a full set of roots for this uh, polynomial GK. Uh, and the roots of GK, they'll also be roots of GK plus one, but then you, uh, 
and then you carry on, you join more and more routes. So, so you keep on doing this until you've adjoined as many routes as possible for all of these polynomials GK, and that gives you this ring called L. This is supposed to be analogous to, you know, you just, uh, uh, you know, on the previous slide, we start with rationals and we keep adjoining routes of unity. Um, <clears throat> okay, so then, uh, <clears throat> uh, a bunch of things we need to say involve this uh, this group Z mod P to the infinity. So let's just uh, mention about that. So this is uh, can be described in a whole bunch of different ways. One way is it's kind of the co-limit of the, all the uh, groups Z mod P to the K. I mean, the kind of obvious map goes from Z mod P to the K plus one back down to Z mod P to the K, but there's also an inclusion in the opposite direction, a co-limit of those or isomorphic to this quotient where you take Z, you invert P, and then you take the quotient by Z, and that's also equivalent isomorphic to rationals mod the P local integers or the piadic rational numbers modulo the piadic integers, or it's also isomorphic to a uh, group of all, uh, all P to the K roots of unity uh, in you know, the subgroup of the circle. And a kind of key exercise to understand about here is, uh, you know, well, there's obviously a map from the integers to the endomorphisms of Z mod P to the infinity that extends over uh, um, extends over the piadic or so the completion. Um, and uh, so actually the endomorphisms of Z mod P to the infinity is isomorphic to the ring of piadic integers. That's also isomorphic to the character group. Homomorphisms from Z mod P to the infinity is just that. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, so we joined a whole bunch of roots of all these polynomials, GK. So let's let theta be the set of all, set of all those roots that we are joined. <clears throat> and it's not very hard to see that, uh, you know, uh, we have this formal group law plus E, um, which is a uh, formal group law over E. And so we can feed in these roots of these GKs. And, uh, and, uh, and it turns out to, uh, it's kind of pretty formal that you take the formal sum of any two roots of these GKs, you're going to get another root of GK. So this theta is actually a group under this formal sum operation, and uh, it's isomorphic to Z mod P to the N. Uh, so, sorry, Z mod P to the infinity, uh, N copies of that. And if you remember, we discussed this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, formal scheme interpretation of things where you had this formal scheme G, which is the formal spectrum of the Morava E theory of CP infinity. And you know, in some sense, you should kind of think of this guy as being analogous to uh, so we'll explain that in more detail, maybe if you're familiar with elliptic curves, right? If you've got an elliptic curve, say over the complex numbers, uh, or, or let's say you've got a, an arithmetic elliptic curve, right? elliptic curve over Z, but then you can consider its complex points. So that gives you an elliptic curve over C and you consider the torsion points in your elliptic curve over C. That's a group that's isomorphic to Q mod Z cross plus Q mod Z. Uh, and, uh, and so there's a kind of relationship between your original elliptic curve and this, uh, Q mod Z plus Q mod Z group. Uh, and, uh, you know, and they're rather different objects in some sense, um, but on the other hand, uh, they kind of have parallel properties. Uh, and uh, so often if you want to think about what's going to happen with G, well, you sort of try and think about it, analogous things happening with this group. Uh, and then you know, they, they live in rather different worlds, but nonetheless, there's some analogy that will guide you. Okay, so then we're going to look at the uh, character group, the, homomorphisms from this theta to S1, and using this fact here that hom from Z mod P to the infinity into S1 is piadix, this theta star we see is isomorphic to n copies of the piadics. I mean, I consider that as a groupoid with one object. And so now our lambda G, so on the previous slide, lambda G was the uh, groupoid of functors from Z to, to G, uh, but on this slide, it's the groupoid of functors from this theta upper star to G. And uh, it's not very hard to check that any functor from theta upper star to G will factor through theta star mod P to the K for some K. So uh, think of this as being a co-limit like this. Uh, and then we're going to define CG again, uh, sort of, uh, more or less the same as on the previous slide. We take, uh, uh, we take this uh, groupoid lambda G, this is a finite groupoid. We take the M upper star thing, which is a rational vector space of finite dimension. And then we tensor it with this fancy ring L uh, that we just constructed up here. And so this is, and that's the same thing, it's just functions uh, from the isomorphism classes in lambda G to L. <coughs> okay, so uh, how are we gonna define some kind of character map? Well, uh, um, 
So we'll, let's, look, let's look at this see here. We had this Peter Starr mod Peter the K coming in here. And if you look at the classifying space of that and, and the ecohomology, also from the sort of standard story that we said about the um, rather ethereal classifying spaces of abelian groups, you've just got uh, uh, n variables x1 up to xn, and then you kill off the gks of x1 up to gkxn. And uh, <clears throat> you know, so you know, in, in other words, you're making x1 up to xn be roots of this polynomial gk. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and kind of l is where we've sort of joined roots. And if you think about you know, what it means, there's some, uh, some pretty obvious map from this guy to l. Um, okay, so, uh, so if I've got some theta up, some u going from theta up a star mod p to the k to the g, then that gives me a map classifying spaces from classifying space of this to classifying space of g, and then uh, uh, and then you apply the Morava e theory e cohomology that gives you a map from e up a zero b g to e up a zero of this ring here, and then we follow it with this phi k going to l. So any such u is going to give me a map from e up a zero b g to l. And we assemble, put all these together, you're going to get a map chi uh, from L tensored with the, over E0 with E0 BG going to this. And uh, so the key HKR theorem is that uh, you know, analogous to the uh, classical fact of about uh, character rings in uh, classical representation theory is that this, uh, this map chi here is an isomorphism. So notice, of course, yeah, um, <clears throat> oh, actually, I'm not sure I even said. I think I didn't say this correctly. Yeah. Oh, oh no, I did say it correctly. So yeah, in forming this L, I didn't start with E zero. I start with the rationalization of E zero. So this, uh, so both sides of this are kind of rational vector spaces. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> um, it's a kind of standard thing in uh, stable homotopy theory that tensoring with the rationals is often quite a destructive operation. It often uh, destroy it destroys information that you really need to keep. So this is not telling us really quite as much information as you might want to, might hope for, but it does, does tell us quite a lot of information. <clears throat> and again, um, both sides have natural inner products uh, um, because of the, um, remember we, we had this ambidexterity theorem, which says that E up is our, uh, E zero BG is uh, naturally self dual. Uh, so we've got a kind of inner product in the E zero case, and then we've got an inner, inner product on CG just coming from the kind of fairly naive inner product on these M upper stars. And you've got the Q lower shriek and the Q upper star and everything, everything, everything is compatible in this idea. <clears throat> okay, let's have a bit of a, a little bit of, bit of a look at the proof of generalized character theory. So uh, we'll, uh, you know, we stated it for groupoids, but it's easy to reduce the case for group, which is convenient for some steps of the proof. And uh, and uh, the, the original statement, the statement that we made on the previous slide was about BG. BG is the, uh, yeah, that's kind of the Borel construction for a single point with trivial G action. Uh, but uh, it's convenient to generalize. We're going to take a finite GCW complex Z. And so, uh, and then we're going to consider the Borel construction, the homotopy orbit space ZHG. Um, so in case when Z is a single point, this is just giving us BG, but it's going to be more general. Uh, and, uh, and then the way it works, we're going to take this, uh, the e cohomology of BG, and then you tensor it with L. And the thing we're going to compare with on the right hand side, you take uh, Z, uh, you take the, uh, so we look at all possible maps from theta upper star to G. Uh, and then for any such theta, we take the fixed points of Z under the, uh, the, the image of this map theta as a subgroup of G. We look at the part of Z that's fixed by that. We take its rational cohomology. We take this for all possible thetas, and then we take the fixed points under G. You know, G acts by conjugation on the set of these homomorphisms, and it kind of acts by you know, kind of a compatible way on this. So G acts by a kind of conjugation on this whole product, and you take the invariance. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so it turns out that if you uh, um, if we just take Z to be a point, then this this is just the sort of same kind of map as we had on the previous slide. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm taking the thick. I no no, this is ordinary rational cohomology. Okay, I mean, uh, <coughs> I mean, 
And in, in the case where Z is a point, you know, this is just supposed to give me Q. Okay, so I'm taking a tensor product over Q with a finite dimensional rational. <coughs> <coughs> So, uh, um, so, so for, you know, Z could be Z could be G mod A, where A is an abelian group, okay? uh, and then uh, you take G mod A and you take the the uh, Borel construction, you just get the classifying space of A. Uh, so that's what's going on on the left hand side. Well, on the right hand side, you've got this uh, Z fixed by the image of theta. So that that'll either be all of Z if the image of theta is contained in A, or be empty if the image of theta is not contained in A. And so here you can just kind of calculate everything. And we know, yeah, we know we know about the e cohomology of BA and, and that's quite a quite an explicit answer for that. So we can just calculate both sides. We find this is an isomorphism. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the good thing about having done generalized this to an arbitrary GCW complex is we can kind of talk about uh, Maya Torus sequences as we build up the uh, uh, build up Z by cells. Uh, and so the conclusion is that if Z has abelian isotropy, so it's kind of in the thick subcategory generated by these kind of G mod A's, then this chi is still going to be an isomorphism. <laughs> and then, you know, in, when proving that E upper star BG was uh, finitely generated, we introduced this idea about some uh, uh, space of complete flags in CG. Uh, and we said that uh, Z cross F and Z cross F squared, they're both going to have abelian isotropy. And we explained, uh, at least outlined, why there's an equalizer diagram like this. And uh, so we know that the uh, character map is going to be an isomorphism for this guy and for this guy. Uh, and we need to check that it's an isomorphism for this guy. But there's uh, some kind of a straightforward argument from this equalizer diagram to do that. <coughs> um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> and I'll just uh, explain a couple of corollaries of that. So. Uh, so here we kind of did this. This is all sort of tensored with L, and so uh, and then L kind of has a Q in it. So we can't sort of really get rid of the Q, but this L is kind of morally a Galois extension of, uh, of, of Q tensor E zero, and so we can just take fixed points under the Galois action of the Galois group, and uh, and that just gives you that gives you a uh, an isomorphism an answer. You take a fixed points of the Galois action here, then you, the L will go away, and you just get the rationalized E theory. So on the left-hand side, you just get the Q tensored with the uh, E theory of BG. And it, what, it works out that what happens on the right, you get uh, product of factors one for every abelian subgroup. Okay, so every abelian subgroup uh, A of G, you get that there's a certain uh, regular local ring DA, and you take, uh, which is a free of finite rank as a module over E zero. And so you take a product of all of these guys, again, rationalized, and then you take a, G kind of acts on this by conjugation. Um, so you get a kind of a, quite a nice answer um, for uh, Q ten three zero. And like I say, this is a, it's a regular local ring. Um, so you get some kind of kind. You could do some nice things uh, in uh, commutative algebra because of, because of these uh, about the ni nicest kind of complete local Noetherian rings you could. <coughs> um, and yeah, and, and you should compare this kind of with the sort of things that uh, Natalia was talking about. Um, this is a, a reduction um, of to what's happening on the, um, <coughs> on abelian subgroups. But but actually, it, this is a kind of stronger than uh, kind of things that Natalia was talking about because we, we don't just have like a F isomorphism. You, you do have a, you've got an actual isomorphism of ring, uh, and uh, that's kind of very special to the fact that we're tensoring with rationals. Uh, tensoring with rationals allows you to use a whole bunch of uh, techniques that don't exist elsewhere. And what's this DA, DA about? Um, so remember, we had this kind of formal group scheme G. And I sort of uh, outlined at least this uh, picture that uh, uh, the formal spectrum associated to E0 BA uh, should be thought of as, as being homomorphisms from the, the character group A upper star into G. And uh, all these kinds of statements require a bunch of interpretation because uh, a category of formal schemes is not that closely analogous to a sort of category of sets or anything. But uh, <clears throat> but there is a kind of sub -scheme, a closed sub scheme of HOM A star G, which you should really think of as being analogous to the uh, mod, uh, kind of scheme of injective homomorphisms from A upper star to G, uh, and that's what corresponds to this ring DA. <clears throat> 
And here, you know, here we rationalized. Rationalizing is the same as inverting at u0, right? I mean, u0 is p. We've already uh, inverted all other primes, so rationalizing is the same as inverting u0. Another thing you could do is you could invert one of your UKs. It doesn't really, yeah, it's not really very meaningful to invert UK unless you've also killed off IK. So you, you, you kill off the lower U's and then you invert the you invert UK. Um, so you could also think about uh, taking this you quotient by UK and then you invert UK, you quotient by IK, invert UK. And uh, there's a similar map like this where you, uh, um, and uh, uh, compare this to something that's determined by abelian subgroup. Uh, <coughs> and, and, uh, um, and here, you know, because you're not, so you're not rationalized, you, you, you don't have the HKR techniques available, you, but you do have the same kind of techniques that Natalia talked about that are available, and you can prove that uh, this kind of thing is, uh, is actually an F isomorphism. Uh, John Greenlees and I wrote a paper about this in which you actually, in which you kill, uh, you question out by IK. Uh, instead of quotienting by IK, you could complete with respect to IK. That's a similar sort of story. Uh, and uh, there's later papers by uh, Stapleton and co-authors that uh, do that sort of thing. <coughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I mean, uh, I mean, there is a kind of L that you could tensor with uh, to make it kind of look more like this thing. Uh, where it would be sort of more like homomorphisms into G instead of subgroups, but uh, but that you know, that, that, so that would kind of make it uh, you would, you could get something that's kind of more analogous to this description here, but uh, it wouldn't wouldn't make it uh, an isomorphism. You, can't, uh, you can't reasonably expect to get an isomorphism except in the k equals zero case. <coughs> Okay, so for later use, I want to sort of explain a, a little side point. Okay, so let's, uh, for simplicity, we're going to consider this case where uh, you've got some uh, finite group or groupoid G, and then uh, I'm going to assume that E1 BG is zero and E0 BG is a free module of finite rank. Now, that's a very common case uh, in, in the calculations that people have been able to do. It's not universal, as kind of, uh, it was actually conjectured for quite a long time that it was it would happen for all, all G, but uh, eventually, uh, Chris and Lee found a counterexample of that. Um, but uh, <clears throat> so we're going to assume that there's a basis, you know, we've got a free module basis E1 up to ER. So. Um, and then, the, uh, so we had this pairing um, uh, on the E0 BG, where we uh, as I said, the general form of, a, of our perfect pairing, you take the F and G, you multiply them, and you apply this theta here. So there's a different map from E0 BG to E0 that we could consider as a trace map. Um, so, uh, remind, yeah, so the idea with that, you take any basis, and then you take, you've got your element F, you multiply it by the basis element EI, then you expand that out in terms of your basis. So it's a sum of AIJ, EJ. So these AIJs, they're kind of, uh, they form the matrix corresponding to multiplication by F. You take a trace of that matrix, i.e. the sum of the AIIs, that's what we're calling core F. And an exercise that doesn't matter, doesn't, uh, doesn't depend on which basis we use. <coughs> Um, and uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's see how this works in the case where oops, uh, we're looking at this E zero BG, or uh, or in terms of character ring, right? We can uh, take this E zero BG and we tensor it up with L. It's the same as the character ring, and so we've got this theta and the tor and on the character ring. The theta, well, that's kind of what we discussed earlier. Uh, essentially, uh, we take uh, representatives of the isomorphism classes in lambda G, and that, that capital gamma I be the automorphism group. And we discussed previously the formula for theta f. You just take, take your f, you evaluate it at each of these isomorphism classes, and you multiply by the inverse of the order of the automorphism group. Uh, whereas tor, uh, it's uh, also pretty easy to see that uh, tor, you just uh, you don't have these adjustment factors. You just add up the values at the different isomorphism classes. <coughs> but if g is abelian, then uh, uh, then then you, know, you think about what these gamma i's are. The gamma i's are just equal to g in, in the abelian class. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I mean, uh, the kind of gamma i. The gamma i is, ever, is sort of basically it's a, it's a centralizer. But uh, in, in a uh, um, <clears throat> you know, in the abelian case, all centralizers are equal to the whole group. 
um, and so in this case, we find that the trace form is just the uh, is just the uh, the better this uh, perfect form theta multiplied by g by, by the order of g. <clears throat> so we'll need that later. So now we're going to generalize these generalized characters even more. Um, so for a space, I'm going to define lambda zero g to be the co-limit of this uh, homotopy classes of maps from this classifying space theta star mod p to the m uh, into x. Uh, and kind of the point about this is if our x is equal to bg, then it's pretty easy to identify this lambda zero x with just the um, set of isomorphism classes in lambda g. <coughs> so, uh, so our character theory involved these sets pi zero lambda g, and now we can try you know, of this lambda zero that generalizes that. So we can define a character ring for a space. Uh, Cx is just maps from this lambda zero x to L. And uh, by essentially the same construction as we had before, we've still got a character map. Character map from L tensored with E zero x to Cx. And that's going to be an isomorphism in the case where x is a classifying space with a finite groupoid. <clears throat> yeah, but it's going to be an isomorphism for some other cases as well. Um, so to explain that, let's uh, recall about the Eilenberg McLean spaces. So uh, <coughs> uh, traditional notation for Eilenberg McLean space would be K A D, but I want to use K as the Morava K theory. And uh, um, also, anyway, this seems to be popular in more recent literature. Um, you know, default. You know, so you've got an abelian group A. You apply B A. Uh, you apply the classifying space. You get B A. But uh, when A is abelian, B A is actually a topological group, so you can you can apply, take its classifying space again. You can do B squared A and carry on like that, and then the uh, default classifying space of A is the same as this uh, island member claim space K A D. It's basically characterized by these properties that the uh, pi D of B to the D A is A, and all the other homotopy groups are trivial, uh, and uh, and it also has this property that if you look at the homotopy class of maps from a space Z into B to the D A. That is just your default the Heath cohomology of Z with coefficients in A. Now, uh, so we're looking at this theta star mod P to the M or theta star mod P to the K. That's uh, you know, it's, you know, somewhat similar to just the original theta star itself, which is the piadics to the N. And the piadics to the N is sort of similar to Z to the N. And the classifying space of Z is, is a circle. So classifying space of Z to the N is a torus. And torus like that, and uh, um, <clears throat> and the homology of that torus is just an exterior algebra. Homology of S one to the n is an exterior algebra generated by uh, um, uh, oh, uh, actually that d there should be n. Okay, so uh, exterior algebra generated by this free abelian group, which is i one of the torus or h one of the torus. Um, <clears throat> And so you have to do some kind of technical work to sort of get rid of, you know, deal with the difference between this theta star mod P, P to the K or theta star or Z to the N. That, that's, that's kind of technicalities I'm going to ignore. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so if we sort of ignore the difference between, uh, uh, between the theta star and Z to the N, then we come to this conclusion here that uh, lambda zero of the default classifying space of uh, a is uh, is just a to the power n choose d. So actually, yeah, the, um, that's not quite true. Actually, should have said something slightly different. Um, yeah, uh, lambda zero b to the d a uh, is uh, Here, a, I mean, a could be a, any abelian group, which might not be an abelian p group, but, uh, but the abelian, the part of ordered um, co prime p will just go away. Um, so this should be the p, the p local part. Anyway, so here, yeah, we get, uh, um, uh, yeah, you basically just get the homomorphisms from the uh, deep exterior power of the, uh, your theta star into a, and that's uh, this, this thing here is just a free abelian group of uh, rank n choose d. Uh, <coughs> And uh, yeah, the lambda zero x is kind of, well, it's a bit more complicated, a bit complicated for a ge completely general x, but uh, if x happens to be a double loop space, then you can describe it quite easily. Uh, in that case, a case where x is a double loop space, uh, uh, your lambda zero, it's just homomorphisms of graded groups. 
from the full exterior exterior algebra of theta star to the homotopy groups of X. Uh, so why is that? I mean, it's just that uh, you know, if you've got uh, um, you're mapping this uh, torus into X, but that's the same thing as mapping the double suspension of the torus uh, into Z, now where your Z is, is this guy here, and double suspension of the torus uh, splits stably. I mean, the general fact that suspen double suspension of a product is just the uh, double suspension of S0 and the P and the Q and the smash product. And so double suspension of a product of two spheres is just a wedge of spheres. And uh, double suspension of a torus is just a wedge of various spheres. Uh, and then combined with that, you just get this complete. So yeah, so these lambda zero X is kind of in many cases, not a very difficult thing to understand. <clears throat> um, and so there's this theorem of Lurie, uh, which says that the character map is uh, is an isomorphism if X is a pi finite space or, or a finite, you know, which is another name for a finite infinity groupoid. Remember, we mean you've got uh, every component of X has only finitely many homotopy groups, and uh, all the homotopy groups are individually finite. So, in that case, you know, uh, you're getting a, uh, you get a character isomorphism. Um, we don't absolutely need that for the stuff that we're going to say later, but this is kind of very uh, kind of useful fact for just kind of organizing things to uh, let, you, uh, let you guess what might be true. <clears throat> uh, uh, well, so certainly that's part of, part of the proof. So there's some other steps, but uh, yeah. Yeah. working up the Postigold Tower is certainly a kind of key ingredient of it. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so uh, um, so yeah. Anyway, anyway, so we're we're seeing that these beta the DAs are playing a key role here. So we ought to try and understand what's the Morava E theory of those beta the DX. Uh, <clears throat> um, so we said that uh, if you look at for, you take uh, the E cohomology of BA and you take its formal spectrum, that's Hom A star G. And actually, to uh, kind of organize various things, it's uh, uh, it's uh, there's reasonably elementary to see that the hom from a star into some well hom get exactly what we need for this but yeah I think hom from a star into a divisible group at least is always the same thing as tor a g so we take this uh, first torsion product um, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> and on the previous slide we kind of had hom from lambda d theta star into a. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, and kind of as an extension of this sort of thing here, it works out that this is, uh, this is the uh, same as you take the, you can take a kind of uh, D plus one fold tor. Um, you can, uh, <coughs> it's uh, kind of usual to sort of take tor of two factors, but you can uh, also take tor of as many factors as you like. Uh, and uh, just as a kind of, Derived tensor product in the derived category, if you like, the derived tensor product of uh, several factors. Uh, and so you can take this uh, thing where you've got D copies of theta and then your A. Uh, and then, uh, like here, you know, here, you've got like the alternating part of the uh, uh, default tensor product. And you know, again, you take some kind of alternating part of the tor. Uh, and that, uh, that can, these things can be identified. Uh, and that this is kind of the right way. You know, Right way to sort of control the functoriality. Um, <clears throat> okay, so then uh, we want to understand about the uh, Morava E theory of these uh, Einstein McLean spaces. Um, so, uh, if, so D, if D is one, you take the spoof of E zero B C P to the K, then that's just a kernel. That's that's this Hom A star G, but that's just a kernel of multiplication by P to the K as a self map of our formal group G. And when you take the dth exterior power of that, you, know, yeah, you do have to, uh, you, know, you shouldn't take this to be too, um, too lightly. I mean, we are taking uh, tensor powers or exterior powers, not of groups, but of group schemes. And uh, you know, one needs some technical work to make that, uh, make that work properly, but uh, it can be done. And so we get this thing here and uh, I'll just mention that uh, this, uh, yeah, like I say, G is kind of like theta. So, uh, so this kernel is kind of, uh, this kernel here is kind of like, Z mod P to the K to the power N, and you take the exterior powers of that, well, if you go past the nth one, you'll just get zero. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so so from this, you know, you can uh, you can um, you can do the same thing with CP to the K um, uh, replaced by an arbitrary finite abelian group A, and uh, kind of the right way to control the functoriality of it is to describe it again as an iterated tor. So you have that kind of tor of D copies of G in this K, and then the alternating part. Um, <coughs> Uh, and there's a kind of, this is kind of not really on the main line of things we're doing, but it, I'll just mention it anyway. Uh, you could take the n plus first uh, uh, classifying space, yeah, or either my McLean space kz n plus one, which is more or less the same thing as kz mod p to infinity n. Uh, you take spiff of the e zero that, that's just like the last alternating tor. This is actually a one dimensional formal group of height one. Okay? I mean, these uh, yeah, so. If you do this for d less than n, then you get something which is kind of uh, not you know, the, uh, the Morava E theory ring is not just a power series, it's a power series ring in several variables. When we get to the last one, again, it's just got a power series ring in one variable, kind of like the Morava E theory of CP infinity. And so, and again, so it gives you a formal group. Um, and uh, formal group law that we started with had height n. Uh, this formal group law associated to CP infinity has height n, but this formal group law associated to this last thing, the uh, KZ, uh, KZ mod P, P to infinity n, this actually has height one. It's kind of isomorphic, the multiplicative formal group. Uh, so there's a bunch of, uh, bunch of interesting stuff that comes out of this. Um, but, uh, that's just kind of that's a more explicit statement of the same thing. You take the E0 of this last either member plane spectrum, the last either member plane space, you just get power series on one variable, and it kind of gives, has, has this very, uh, your y can be chosen. So you've got this very simple formula for the coproduct. Uh, you just get uh, this kind of multiplicative formal group law thing. <clears throat> also, mention, um, yeah, so I've so far I've said this for Morava E theory, of course, you've got parallel results for Morava K theory. Um, uh, <clears throat> And all of these guys, these k zero b to the d a. That's this is a, it's a finite dimensional vector space over over f b, and it's a well, it's a ring because the Morava k theory space is always a ring. But also these b to the d a is these are uh, uh, commutative topological groups. So you get a Hopf algebra structure, I commutative Hopf algebra structure on this guy here, and uh, category of uh, category of finite dimensional Hopf algebras over f p. Is actually equivalent to the category of modules over a certain ring, so called the Odenay ring. Non commutative ring, but uh, kind of a fairly mild kind of non commutativity. Uh, and yeah, you've got this, uh, um, is this equivalent of categories. And if you look in the Hopkins Lurie paper, a bunch of, you know, they need to know a bunch of things about these rings, and they say a bunch of things in the, in the language of the Odenay modules. Uh, not absolutely co compulsory to use that framework, but it is a, a useful way of organizing calculations about them. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, uh, here's our general ambidexterity theorem that we've been working towards. Uh, you've got any functor Q of finite infinity groupoids or pi finite spaces, and the claim is it's ambidextrous. So it'd be uh, Q lower shriek is isomorphic to Q lower star as functors uh, on this uh, category of uh, parameterized family of, of K and local spectra. <clears throat> so it's. Uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> So, but you know, by definition of what we mean by pi finite spaces, we see that the, with all the fibers of this Q, um, they're going to they're going to be truncated. They're m truncated to some level m. Otherwise, all the homotopy groups vanish for k bigger than m. And uh, kind of stuff that we did uh, before, for, uh, based on the greenlee sadowski theorem, tells us that everything works when m is less than or equal to one, and we're going to do m bigger than one uh, by induction. And uh, <clears throat> So as a kind of key case, we want to prove that uh, uh, you know, making a statement for any Q from X to Y, uh, but the kind of key special case is where we're just looking at the projection from the, uh, uh, the island by McLean space, B to the MCP down to one. So let's explain that reduction. Okay, so suppose, um, suppose we know that this C is ambidextrous. Well, then uh, you know, by the usual kind of reduction to comma categories or fibers, we know that for any Q whose fibers are isomorphic to B to the MCP, that'll be ambidextrous. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and a kind of induction based on that makes it easy, easy to see that uh, 
any b to the m a to one is ambidextrous. So it, a is supposed to be a finite abelian group, and it's kind of everything's pretty much trivial if it's a uh, if a uh, uh, has order co prime to p. So we reduce the case where a is a finite abelian p group, and then you can build it. You know, that has a, um, a filtration where the quotients are isomorphic to cp and uh, induction up that filtration. You're going to see that this guy is ambidextrous. <laughs> Uh, and so again, that means that you've got any Q where the fibers are of the form B to the MA, there, those are going to be ambidextrous. And there's kind of an obvious one of those. I mean, I'm going to assume, assume that X is M truncated. So the homotopy groups of X are trivial past pi M. And then there's this Postikov truncation where this is X less than M. So you just kind of kill off the uh, Mth homotopy group. Uh, so the uh, You've got this map like this. The fiber is B to the M A, where A is the is part is the last homotopy group of X. So you've got so this uh, um, so so this map here, this Postokov truncation map, is going to be ambidextrous. Uh, but then by our induction hypothesis, the map from X less than M down to one is going to be also ambidextrous. And uh, composition of ambidextrous maps, you, know, you can there's, well, there's a bunch of formalities to deal with about. Uh, this kind of thing, but I hope it's uh, very plausible. The composition of two ambidextrous maps is ambidextrous, uh, and so uh, um, so from this we conclude that uh, any map, uh, so this so any m truncated map going down to one is ambidextrous, and then by the same usual thing about reduction to fibers, but any map with uh, m truncated fibers is ambidextrous. So this this little block here explains why it's enough to do this case. <coughs> And uh, it, you know, it, in the case M equals one, if you remember what we first proved is the greenlee sadowski theorem that uh, C lower shriek K going to C lower star K as an isomorphism. And then from that, we managed to deduce uh, that uh, the, the kind of full thing uh, at level M equals one. And uh, in the same sort of way uh, for higher M, it's still gonna be sufficient uh, to uh, prove the ambidexterity isomorphism in the special case where we just got uh, k uh, considered as a constant function, and and again in this case here where our map is just a projection from b to the m c p down to one. <clears throat> okay, so uh, so this you know um, <clears throat> this guy here um, is just uh, the homotopy groups of this spectrum is just a, a k homology of b to the m c p. Whereas this guy, the homotopy groups on the right hand side, is the K cohomology of B to the MCP. Uh, so, what we're saying is we've got a, yeah, we've got a map like this, which corresponds a uh, usual sort of way to a, a pairing uh, on the uh, Morava K theory of this, uh, on the Morava K theory ring here. So, this is the same sort of thing as we had uh, in, uh, uh, in, in the case M equals one, that the, uh, the comparison map uh, from the uh, C lower shriek to C lower star corresponds to a, a certain pairing uh, on the Morava K theory of BG, and we needed to prove that that was a perfect pairing. So in, that, in that case, we, we, we sort of deduced from other things that it was a perfect pairing, but it's actually an equi equivalent statement to say that this uh, pairing that we get is perfect. And I've kind of uh, glossed over the fact that we've actually got this map here, right? I mean, there's uh, we do need to say some stuff about. Uh, from the M, uh, from the previous case in the induction, we'd get this map, um, and I uh, don't have time to sort of explain too many details about that. But anyway, we have from the M minus one case, we produce this map, and we want to prove that it's fine. And this map here, like I say, it, uh, it corresponds to a specific pairing on this ring, and we want to prove that that's a perfect pairing. Uh, and uh, it's equivalent to say you know, by fairly standard ideas about the relationship between Morava K and Morava E, uh, say that this pairing is perfect, it's equivalent to saying that this pairing is perfect. Um, <clears throat> and uh, no, but it's gonna be better to work with the Morava E theory because uh, the Morava E theory thing is torsion free. And uh, the next step, you're gonna see, we're gonna be multiplying by some integers. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> and so the pairing is, uh, you know, yeah, as, in the as in the case M equals one, we find the pairing is, you know, Multiple to find the inner product of f and g, then you just uh, multiply f by g, and then you apply this map theta goes down to e zero. Uh, and again, as in the case, there's also this trace map. I mean, uh, and again, a trace map in very great generality. Whenever you've got a ring that's uh, 
uh, finally generated free module over E0, then you're going to get a trace map like this. Uh, <coughs> and then there's some extra work to do. I mean, well, so we ex kind of explained in the M equals one case why it's true that the, uh, uh, the, the, the tor and the theta are just, uh, you know, tor. In the M equals one case, tor was just equal to the order of the group multiplied by theta. Uh, and uh, in this case, it's again going to be true that tor is some p to the k multiplied by theta. So there's, well, there's a bunch of work going in to prove this, which uh, I'm not going to talk about. Um, but, uh, but anyway, um, so then, uh, you know, um, we want theta to be, uh, give us a perfect pairing. This tor is not going to give us a perfect pairing. There's going to be some discrepancy because you, lots of stuff gets multiplied by p to the k. But uh, we, can, uh, we can just look at the map given by tor, and then we can ask whether, well, if, well firstly, is it, you know, can we, uh, um, if we divide it by p to the k, does it give us a perfect pairing? And, uh, well, that's just an al that's kind of an algebraic question about the structure of this ring here, and uh, this is the structure of that ring is kind of uh, it is reasonably well understood. Um, as I say, I had this. I, I gave a rather abstract formulation of it on the previous slide in terms of uh, uh, these uh, tor of um, iterated tor of the formal group, but uh, you know, that came out of it. That was a theorem of Ravenel and Wilson, and they proved it by kind of much more hands-on sort of elements. Uh, methods where you actually calculate with elements and so on. And, and so we've got a reasonable hold on, on this structure of this ring and uh, we can try and calculate uh, this trace map and so on. And we can uh, do enough calculations to prove from this description here that this theta gives us a perfect pairing. Uh, and that proves, and via this whole sequence of reductions, uh, that proves the general Hopkins loop. So uh, we'll stop there. <laughs> Right, are there any questions for Neil or any comments? All right, uh, if not, let's uh, thank Neil once more for a very informative series of four lectures. Thank you. <laughs>